public uh, city, manager. city manager. Oh, I just want to comment. I think we have to uh, take into consideration all the time that has been spent to get to this point. And my concern is that we may be the closest we will ever be to having the building rehabbed right now. Um, so if we move away from that, I think we just need to all recognize we may not ever be in a position again to rehab it. So that's just something that uh, we all have to be comfortable with or not comfortable with depending on, on how you determine it. But I think we as staff kind of think uh, we've gotten it this far. The next step is to really award the contract. The plans and specs are there. And we'd have to kick in some money and we'd have this job done. And if we don't go forward, then it's probably less and less likely we'll ever do this project, at least under this grant or for some other way. So that's just what we're trying to point out. And we don't amongst us have the best answer either. It's just, I think, a policy decision that you don't need to come to tonight. We could go back and get some more information. We could certainly make some efforts um, through our economic development manager to see if there's people out there that might occupy the building. We could come back with some estimates and, and discussion about that because there again, we wouldn't want to do this work and have it sit there and start to deteriorate again. So we could come back <laughs> with more of a package of, if you were to proceed, if the council's interested in, in hearing more about that or is answering any questions that we can for you. Yes. Uh, Council Member Crane. Question. Is the railroad a tax paying entity? Do they pay property tax? That's tax. <laughs> right. Finance so director is saying no. It was, it was one of those, uh, aren't we all? <laughs> uh, more than most. Yeah. Those two go hand in hand, don't they? Um, we don't get any increment from that investment. Do we get any jobs from that investment? How will using the redevelopment dollars for that purpose benefit the community, community economically? I hope we come to agreement on the value of the expenditure with that in mind. Uh, okay, Council Member Rodney. Well, first I'll respond to that. I think that that it's it, because it's a blighted area, it can stimulate economic development. So that's one answer to your question. But I do see that because it's not directly building tax increment, but to the extent that it stimulates private property development around that area. Or it, jobs. Yeah, or jobs. But then the other thing I was going to say as a question um, would be to talk to MTA and see if um, you know, they might want to occupy the building. Um, and if there's some possibility that some bus stops might be able to be there, if, you know. Anyway, so that, that might be, um, you know, in researching possible occupants. Right. There, and, and, and I think this all taxi. came about. Maybe, maybe taxi would want to have their offices there. I don't know. There, there was a, originally a, <coughs> a, a multimodal um, transit center designed for that area. And so I think that's how this started about back in 2000. But since then, MTA has kind of backed out of that and is looking at different sites. And so I don't think that that's their area anymore. And I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure they're going to have any interest in it. Our, our I didn't hear what you said. I said I will. I will take on Ms. Rosen's question to Ms. Richards. Councilmember Landon. I, I want to go back and talk a little bit about my idea of just doing a partial build. I wonder if, given the economic times and given that if we, if we could present something to funders that rationalized why building to suit after we found a tenant made more sense for wise expenditure of the money and protecting the investment, they might be receptive to the idea and at that point we could decide we want to use redevelopment funds to finish the interior. Question. Do we technically find a tenant? Do we operate it or does the railroad operate it? That's that's yeah. the problem. It's it's not ours to operate or, or find tenants. Oh, we don't find the tenant. Um. I'm going to recommend we go to public comment on this issue. Um, again, I'm leaning in favor of, of full funding right now. Uh. 
Judy Pruden. Uh, having a, thank you, Jane, for bringing that up. For us that have worked on this project, I have extensive time into the project. In 2001, 2002, I worked a lot with Rick. We did lose a grant to Fort Bragg uh, when we tried to get the bigger, the bigger pile. And, um, you know, um, that uh, amount of time that has gone in by staff down through the years, um, you do need to realize that. And this project has been ongoing, like I said, for eight years. Now, in terms of background, the last time we ran an excursion train is October 1996, the train station. That was the last time I was in, the last time we used the facility. Shortly thereafter, the tracks were defective and they shut down uh, operations of both the freight and the excursion lines. About 1997 through 98 and I think 99, I worked with MTA. They have four different plans for that area because they were interested in it being an intermodal transit center. But the intermodal transit center also included Amtrak, bus coming over and picking up their passengers. They don't have to pick them up at Burger King. They can pick them up at the railroad station. That's a transportation use. The Greyhound doesn't have to drop at the airport. It can drop downtown. In fact, it makes more sense with that. MTA can run one of their circulation. Uh, their number nine bus can go through there and pick up people and drop. Again, it's a very central location. So there's multiple transportation uses for the site or nearby. Now, you know, I believe the Railroad Authority, and I just talked with them a couple weeks ago because of the large holes on the bridge that goes over Ore Creek, and uh, they went down with their magic fix of a couple pieces of plywood over the holes. They are uh, renting uh, an office in downtown Ukiah. Why don't they go into their train building? You know, since they are already renting, they might as well go into their own building. Now, you need to know on the interior, and Marianne, I, I, underst I understand you're trying to find a compromise here. The interior is a very simple arrangement. If you have not been inside the train depot, it is essentially a desk, an open area for an office, a small waiting area, and a couple restrooms. That, that is the depot. It's a very small building. And the big holdup that we had for the first three years was that the feds require that when they give money, you have to have handicap accessible bathrooms. That's fine. The Secretary of Interior Standards and the other group says you can't take these historical bathrooms <coughs> and gut them. They're part of the historical integrity of the building. Hence, we had this two federal agencies with two different agendas. Uh, I think what it was finally worked out is the women also has a lounge area that's quite nice. And um, that lounge area would then become the unisex bathroom, I think was the compromise. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, but I think that's where we ended up with it somewhere around 2004 was that we would take the expanded uh, women's uh, lounge area and use that for the unisex. So hence, we've gone through all this just to get the money released. This is a key project. Is there anything more evocative for a landmark in Ukiah coming into than the train station on a gateway? My gosh. A few years ago, we hosted um, the, um, Mari, help me out on this, please. Uh, the League of uh, California Cities has region things. Are we the Redwood region? Okay. We hired a trolley, and I got up, and we did all the landmarks in town. And poor Candace was never so embarrassed in her entire life because I set up the circuit. And as we went around town, she kept having to jump up and say, but when we get this fixed, it's going to be fabulous because people are just looking at these, you know, some of our landmarks, and they're not, they're not as pretty as they should be. You know, not everything has to necessarily equate to dollars. <clears throat> Doug is concerned about how does this translate, translate to jobs. But one of the answers is that sometimes aesthetics and quality of life